Hello and good day to you. This is Limping Through Models with me, Nathan, and I am here today with another series on another model that I'm going to be building over the next couple weeks. I'm not sure how many weeks, but it's going to be a while. Um, nevertheless, I do apologize for being a week late. I did say I was going to be back here next week, two weeks ago, with a new video, but that didn't happen because, well, plans change. So aside from that, I have a model picked out. I have a model that I've started, and that model is a model that I've uh, tried to build one time before and didn't really have too much of a uh, good time doing so. But I'm a little more seasoned. I'm a little more mature, as they say, in my model building. So we'll see what happens this time around. And this time around, it's going to be a Campbell's uh, scale model kit uh, of Grandma's house. Let me get a good shot of that right there. Over the river, through the woods. Grandma's house right there. That's what I'm doing. It looks like it's a good model. It's a nice uh, little home. Very homey. I wish my grandma lived in a house like this. Uh, but nevertheless, I'm going to take the next couple of weeks to build it. And you get to follow along with that. So with all of that in mind, let's get started. Over the river and through the woods to Grandma's house we go. That's right, this is Grandma's house. A house that was based off of a house somebody happened to drive by in uh, Washington State, I believe. And they decided, you know what, this would look like a cool model. And they were right because I look at it and I think to myself, hmm, that's a cool model. And you know my ways. I'm going to say, hey, I think it's cool. I want to buy it. I want to build it. I want to see what this is all about. And I love it so much I bought it twice. Not intentionally, but nevertheless, this is my second attempt, so I'm going to be as careful as I can be bringing everything together to make this model a perfect example of what Grandma's house should be. Heck, I might even put a little piece of pie on top of a mantle somewhere in uh, on one of the windows. Who knows? Now, admittedly, this is an older model. It's close to 50 years old, to be exact. And there's a lot of preparation that goes into creating the structure itself, specifically having to build the walls from scratch, essentially. They don't have pre-cut pieces of clapboard with a whole wall. You have to piece each part of the wall together. And on top of that, you have to, have to cut out your own windows as well. But at least they give you a little bit of a guide notched into the wall itself to show you where that window is supposed to be cut. Now, one thing that they do recommend in the instructions is that you back everything with masking tape. And the reason for that is because these pieces are really fragile. And if you cut too hard into it, you're likely going to snap them. But the best laid plans always go awry in my case. And even though I try to be as careful as I could be with cutting these pieces, I still find myself breaking pieces as I was cutting them. Which is okay because I just took some glue and put those pieces back together, sopping some glue in between the cracks, and then getting rid of the excess uh, from those pieces. And hopefully that would be done with that. Except I wasn't done with that because it kept happening again. again. And I really went big on this one and broke the whole thing apart. Suffice it to say, I'm not going to bore you with footage of me busting any other walls as I try to cut out the windows. So here's all the finished wall pieces ready to be put together. Now the instructions say to use these elevations that are on this large sheet of paper, but considering how I don't really have much space for this paper to lay out, I took a photocopier and photocopied all the elevations I needed to build the walls for Grandma's house. So I'm supposed to use these elevations in tandem with some parchment paper to place the wood on top, but I don't have any parchment paper. So I have to figure something else out to line these pieces up on the sheet. So I decided to use a glue stick, with the initial thought being that a little dab of glue on the back of the wood 
would keep it in place while I glue all the pieces together so as not to disrupt the alignment of that piece on top of the elevation paper. I used a dental pick to apply the glue onto the wood pieces and I found that I had plenty of control with how I could apply that glue to the edges and I could also use it to scrape off excess glue that bled out from between the pieces as I put them together. And here's one final check with a straight edge to make sure the edges are flush on both ends of the piece. Now I have one whole sheet done of walls using the method of the glue stick on the wood. And this didn't turn out the way I really wanted it to because I let the glue stick glue sit way too long and now the pieces are actually stuck to the paper. So I had to take additional care in removing the wood pieces from the paper itself. And with this I had to essentially use a ruler as a saw to get this piece off the paper so as not to break it. So in lieu of putting the glue stick to the wood, I put the glue stick on the paper to help that serve as a barrier between the wood glue that would bleed out between the wood pieces as they are brought together. And this proved to be a much better method of accomplishing what I wanted to do. I found that the time it took to build all the walls for one elevation was enough time for the wood glue to cure to the point where I could take these paper pieces off the paper and do so to where it doesn't uh, attach itself to the paper because of the glue stick. And using the ruler it was a much easier uh, time to get these pieces off. And on top of that there was no paper on the back of the wood piece after I took it off. The glue stick glue served its purpose acting as a barrier between the bleeding wood glue and the paper. I now have all the walls I created from the elevations ready to be painted. Now here's the part of the model that did me in the last time. In addition to the walls that are created for the elevations, and there are these additional walls that you have to build using tiny pieces of clapboard. With their powers combined, they serve as the outer walls of three bay windows, so I need to make six of these all together. Now the instructions tell me I need to find a piece that is a sixteenth by a sixteenth, and I think I found the right one until I found another one that looks a lot closer to what I needed and realize that's what I needed. Measure twice, cut once. And now I need to cut these into six pieces for each piece of wood. And how am I gonna do that? With the chopper! That's right, the chopper, one of my favorite tools. So now I have to measure out, I think it was 730 seconds, or as I like to say, 730 tooths. And I had to really put some effort into finding this correct measurement, move my light around to get to the right view of everything and once I got it I get a piece in there and I do a test cut holding my breath the whole time because these are pieces that I can't salvage so the test cut is complete I check it against the elevation it looks good and I check it against the actual measurement and it looks even better so now it's time for me to just go to town and cut 24 of these bad boys It's really hard to cut those pieces so fast, but I was able to do it. Now using my tried and true method of glue stick to paper at the joints where glue would meet with the wood, I apply the glue stick and I apply the first piece which is a middle piece of clapboard. And on each corner of that clapboard you will have one of the pieces that we cut of the sixteenth by sixteenth piece of wood jetting out. This is one of those times where I am forever thankful for the flat square that I have. 
not only can I use it to make sure that the edges are flush, but I can use it to make sure that the top and bottom pieces of clapboard actually flush with the rest of the piece, making an absolutely square wall for the bay window. I have one side that's flush, and now I can turn the square and make sure that the other side is flush. One point that's stressed in building these models is making sure that the plastic pieces fit into where they're supposed to go with the wood. And so I take some of the windows that are supposed to go in these bay windows and I test fit them and realize that they do not fit. You want to know why? Because the edges of those windows on the underside are beveled and they bevel outwards. So when you set it on the wood, it kind of teeters on the wood. So this caused me to break out a flat file and file the underside of these plastic windows until I had flat edges on all four sides of the underside of the window. And once I had that, I was able to fit these windows into the bay window piece without issue. Plus, the time it took to file these windows was enough time for the piece on the paper to cure to where I can peel it off with no residual paper coming off of the sheet. Now I told you this was my second attempt at this model. You want to see what the first attempt looked like? Oof. This is what it looked like here. Yes. What type of teal blue nonsense am I looking at here? There was a lot of uh, miscalculations that I made with this model. Specifically in the spacing of the wood pieces in relation to the cardboard that comes with the model. Now the cardboard that's in the model has different designs cut into it. Not really cut into it, but drawn into it that you have to cut out. Like the second floor, um, the roofs, the base here, um, and it just didn't all line up. So that's what I'm going to be very cognizant of this time around as I go through making this model. Making sure these pieces actually line up. And uh, next week we, we may get into that. I know next week I'm going to be doing the painting of the uh, wood pieces and the trim and everything. It's not going to be this color, thank God. Um, but I have a pretty good idea of what color I do want it to be. And if there's enough time, because I try to keep these around 10 minutes of actual building time uh, per video, if there's enough time, we may get into actually putting this structure together, but I doubt it. Uh, we'll see what happens. So like, comment, subscribe, share, and do everything you have to do to be here next week for part two of this Campbell's Grandma's House build. Until then, see you next time.